All arrows were flashing green on Wall Street today, with the Dow Jones up over a thousand points at one point. But now the market seemed to be in a holding pattern, waiting to hear, of course, what the president has to say. In the meantime, let's bring in Carrie Ann Fournier. She's a CEO at Vibrant Ventures, who spent years working with managers and employees to help them set up shop and work from home. So. It's obviously a good time for us to be speaking with you as we're seeing more and more businesses send their employees to go work from home. What do you think business owners want to hear from the president's address today? You know, I, I think they want a clear plan ahead. And then I think they want to have the time to focus on what they need to do, which is really calm the fears of their own employees and get them being as productive as possible as quickly as possible. And what steps would that require? So I think, first and foremost, this is uncharted territory for many. So any leader and manager, be as clear as possible, really manage by expectation. Um, hopefully, really good managers are doing this anyway. They focus their staff on goals and deadlines. Those who have a tendency to micromanage are going to be very challenged in this situation. So get very clear with your staff what you want them to focus on and when you need it by. Karen, what um, do you think? Uh, what do you think the plus side will be for these employees now working from home, if any? You know, I think it allows people a little more flexibility, certainly from a work-life perspective, but this is still a very stressful time. So the normal benefits, people will be having to perhaps have children at home during the day that they normally wouldn't have. Um, so a lot of the benefits people are going to have to work into a bit because there's going to be uncharted territory. What I'm telling everyone is assume the best, assume good intent, give yourself and others grace, because you're going to have to start learning what helps your productivity and what distracts you. Same thing with your boss, with your employees, with your teammates. So assume good intent, and we can all work through this together. Yeah, because, I mean, a lot of us are online all the time and feel like, you know, you're really working 24-7, it seems like, sometimes. But, but on behalf of the boss who who's at work, um, and in the office, I'm sure he or she must wonder how to measure the productivity of somebody that's now working from home. Exactly. I mean, I think you just hit the nail on the head. Um, there as, actually is, I think, a misperception that most employees will start working remote and slacking. And in fact, the opposite is more typically true, that they don't really know when to turn off, when to separate their work time from their personal time. And so once again, if you're very clear with your employees about what you expect and when, how you're recommending perhaps that they collaborate, really try and get it off the email, reply alls. I mean, that's just a recipe for misinterpretation and miscommunication. With any doubt, pick up the phone and ask. Always ask for clarification. And it can get overwhelming not knowing what's going to be there in the long, long haul. Focus on short, quick wins so that people get comfort um, and confident in this new work paradigm. What if this distance themselves from everyone else? Would there be a good way to approach that conversation? You know, first and foremost, speak with your HR team. Um, I, all the HR um, organizations that I know are on this. They are looking for best practices. They are looking for what's in the best interest of both the employee and the company. So I highly recommend that you speak with your HR department. And certainly, uh, to the extent you feel comfortable, really um, voice your concerns um, to, your, to your manager. Because if you feel you're not feeling well, the last thing a leader is going to want you to do is then infect the rest of his staff or but, her staff. By the way, as we're talking to you, we're expecting the president to speak at 3 o'clock Eastern time about uh, addressing the concerns of the coronavirus uh, from the national level. Uh, but, but there have been so many changes, so many things closed, including schools, which mean kids are home. So from your experience... We, we have a siren going here. We'll, we'll look into what's going on. But do you have advice for people on how to deal with that? Because uh, I bet some of them underestimate uh, what's required to deal with the kids being at home and still working. Absolutely. And I think it really does make a huge difference, the age of the children, um, if they're preschool or younger grammar school to a high school level child, to, to be frank, for the first time, I usually tell my child, get off your technology. Uh, I may be saying, stay on your technology. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, you know, I think this is also where you give people grace. Typically, if we're on conference calls, we don't want a lot of background noise with kids and dogs and animals. We're going to have to get over it a little. And there may be a little bit more distraction and kid noise in the background. 
but we just have to realize that's the world in which we're living. I don't know if you can hear that. We're having noise in the background here. We are. There's a good practice. <laughs> we're not there. even at home. No, you're just, you know, it's like if there were kid noise, you're just kind of substituting it with a little alarm. So. Right. And, and just so folks know, it is an alarm, but they're testing out the fire uh, uh, okay. system. Yeah. We didn't know it was going to come in Potentially here. Potentially the they studio. were thinking more people would be at home, so it wouldn't be as distracting <laughs> at this point. Uh, do you think this will change the way that people... Uh, you know, do their business and do their work in the future if we're kind of testing this out in almost two week increments and then expanding to a month? Yeah, I, I think it's really going to dis dissemble the narrative that some leaders and companies have had, which is it will never work. And now that will be called into question because it's going to have to work um, in some situations. It may be bumpy, it may be less elegant, but within two to four weeks, we'll really understand where uh, certain roles and certain teams can still work in flow and which are the ones that really need more face time. My personal opinion is I think there's going to be more of a mixed model going forward. So people can really think it's what and where are you most productive? There's certain types of work that really can do very well remote. I know I've managed global teams all over the world and we're almost never in person. But there are times that really face to face contact um, and brainstorming really helps move ideas forward and businesses forward. So it's, you know, the millennial Gen Zers are no longer going to accept it's never going to work because we're all working through it now. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Karen, ann thank you so much and uh, good luck to you. I'm sure a lot of people are going to be <laughs> consulting with you to get guidance on how to deal with it. Folks, we're Absolutely. waiting for the president to speak.